All right, hello everybody and welcome back to Satisfactory. My name is Dakova and today we're gonna to be talking about fluids and fluid mechanics. Now, uh, let's, let's start by going over the basics. Fluids flow down pipes and pipelines are measured in cubic meters per minute. We're gonna call them units just to be concise. And we can say that a normal pipeline can accommodate 300 units of flow per minute, whereas a Mark II can accommodate 600 units of flow. Now, generally speaking, Fluids are going to flow from a place that has more fluid to a place that has less. And this means that a generator which is producing fluid will generally have more, and so fluid will flow away from it. If you come to a junction, say a T-junction, and both sides of the output are empty, then the flow should generally split evenly, with a few caveats. If one side already has some fluid, then more fluid is going to go into the less full side. And, uh, and also, fluids are affected by gravity, and so if there is one side that has a sort of downward flowing direction as opposed to another side which has an upward flowing direction then the fluid will prefer the downward flowing direction you can use this to create a priority network in which a lower sort of the lower half of a pipe network fills before the upper half ensuring that machines along that network operate at full capacity all the time now, if you need to achieve a higher flow rate than is possible with the pipelines that you have access to, say you're constructing your first coal power plant, well, you need to have multiple pipelines running in parallel. So, for example, eight coal power plants would use 360 units of water. This can be provided by three water extractors, but will not fit in a single pipeline. So you need to have multiple pipelines in parallel connecting the water extractors to the generators, and they can be re-merged in a pipeline along the edge of the water extractors. Now there is one place where fluid starts to behave a little differently than you might expect. So far everything's been pretty straightforward, but if you wanna use vertical pipelines, then you need to account for head lift. Head lift refers to the vertical lift required to take a fluid source from, a, from one elevation to a higher elevation. Now any of the production buildings like a water extractor, oil extractor, refinery, packager, or so on, will produce 10 units of head lift, a Mark I pipeline pump will produce 20 units of head lift, and a Mark II will produce 50 units of head lift. Now, it makes sense that you might need head lift for any sort of vertical pipeline, but that's not necessarily true. I do think that is how the game was sort of intended to be played, but it is possible to bypass this by taking advantage of the fact that a head lift is applied to an entire pipe network. Now, it now, a network is made of all of the pipes that are connected together with the ability of fluid to flow through them. So notably things like valves, which create directional flow, can sort of halt a, a network if they are either set to zero or if they're facing the wrong direction. They can, they can disconnect two sections of a network in that way. Similarly, a pipeline pump will actually uh, halt a network from one side going into the other. It creates a sort of directionality to it. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can take advantage of this to get much more affordable head lift than to simply use pumps along your entire network. Let's take a look at a few of these designs. All right, first we have a power plant in which we have an additional water extractor located high above the others at a different body of water. Because the water extractor isn't stuck behind any sort of directional flow, the pipeline leading to it is considered part of the same network and the water extractor at the higher elevation is, per, is determining the head lift for the entire network. So this seems to work just fine. Next, we have a water tower design. In this design, we have a set of pumps flowing up one side of water tower into a storage container, which then has a pipeline leading back down into the network. The pipeline leading back down into the network is essential because it's what allows the head lift generated by the pumps to flow back down into the system and update the rest of the network. Now it's worth noting that in update five, if you disable the water flow through a portion of the pipe network, you will cancel the flow of head lift through this. So for example, if we were to put a valve after these pipeline pumps and set the flow rate to zero, then it would prevent the head lift generated by those pumps from sort of connecting back into the network, it sort of divides the, the pipe network at that location. However, head lift doesn't care what the volume of water is. So we can place a valve with the flow rate set to one unit which will ensure that virtually no water ever actually transfers, and so those pumps will have very little sort of active time. They'll use very little power over the grand scheme of things. If we look at the design with the sort of elevated water extractor, it's the same deal by setting that, that elevated water extractor to uh, 1%. We can use, we can create the head lift on the entire system while using virtually no energy to do so. 
But that should about do it for our discussion of fluid dynamics today. Hopefully this guide has been of help to you. Leave a like if it has, and subscribe if you'd like to see more satisfactory content. My name is Ben Dacoba. Thank you again for watching, and have an efficient day.